Welcome to the Tuesday, September 3rd, 2024 meeting of the Montpelier Design Review Committee. We'll let members and staff introduce themselves. Benjamin Cheney, member. William Russell, member. Meredith Crandall, staff. Stephen Everett, member. Martha Smirsky, member. Oh, you're muted, Eric. Eric Yelbertson, member. And Rebecca, member, um, my internet's a little iffy, so I'm going to stay on, not on video. Awesome. Okay, we'll let Meredith review the remote meeting procedures and process. All right, so for those who haven't done this before, I'm going to be sharing my screen. Do a little presentation here. The presentation part is going to stay up is a little bit more for um, anybody who's viewing this via Orca Media, but there are some pointers for everyone who's on remotely. Um, so for anyone viewing tonight's design review committee meeting via Orca Media, you can participate in the discussion via the Zoom platform through either video or telephone access options. Um, if you want to have the full video experience, then you're going to want to type this link into your web browser um, and I'll get a notification to let you into the meeting. Alternatively, you can dial this phone number and when prompted, put in this meeting ID number. Um, and again, I'll get a little uh, notification and let you into the meeting. If anyone is having problems accessing the meeting through these two different options, please email me at mcrandall at montpelier-vt.org. I will be monitoring my email throughout the meeting. Um, for those attending via Zoom, turning your video on is optional. Um, and if you're having connectivity issues, sometimes it's best to actually turn your um, camera off. For everyone attending, please. I'm having trouble hearing. Okay. Um, for everyone attending, if you um, please keep your microphone on mute when you're not speaking, this will help reduce background noise. Um, and as I said previously, uh, for everyone attending via Zoom, turning your video on is optional. The Zoom chat function should only be used for troubleshooting or logistics questions. Um, if you have a question or comment about an item on the agenda, please raise your hand, either physically if your camera is on or by using the raise hand button on your toolbar. Um, I'm going to skip ahead here. Some of the stuff isn't really applicable tonight. Uh, if the In the event the public is unable to access tonight's meeting, and I would get notification of that via email, um, then the meeting will need to be continued to a time and place certain. I'll now hand the meeting back over to the chair. At this point, unless anybody has anything to add, do I hear a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. And I'll second, second it. All in favor of the agenda, speak your names. Ben. William. Stephen. Martha. Eric. Re Rebecca. Okay, we can move forward to the first applicant for Nine School Street. Do we have somebody here or online? We have multiple people okay. online. So I'm going to let you guys figure out who's going to present the first part of the application or discuss the project. Uh, I, I guess I'll start right now. Um, my name is Carolyn Parker, and I'm an independent permit expediter, attend hearings, um, do that type of thing. And uh, TD Bank is one of my clients. We also have Bill um, Swarth out with me and Scott Hope is trying to upload the Zoom so he can uh, join us. Um, he's with Atlas Sign. They're the people that make the signs. Bill will be the contractor installing everything. Um, so basically, if you see our um, you know permit package, they're looking to do many things that the design review might be interested in discussing. Um, the first one would be um, painting the brick from red to gray. Um, I, th you know, they feel that it's going to be a, a better look, um, a classier look. There is, if you look at behind the behind the building, there is another building that is not brick, not the red brick. Across the street, there's a white church. Across the other street, there's more of a brick facade. I mean, a stone facade that is a lighter color. So they're looking to, you know, change the red brick to gray. 
and then it's just updating the signage. They have a new TD image and um, they're looking to wrap the green all around the building where previously it was just small chunks and the rest of it was beige. Um, so I guess we got to start somewhere. <laughs> yeah, and they, everybody has the application and anyone who wants, I can share the application on screen and move around as needed as you're discussing different parts, just let me know. Does the bank intend, does the bank intend this to be their main office in Montpelier? Uh, it's very hard. To, I have my volume all the way up and I'm having a hard time hearing. Does the bank intend that this will be their main office in Montpelier? Is it their only office in it, Montpelier? Is it going to be the main office in Montpelier? I believe it is. There was a building. This is Bill. Um, from what I've heard, there was a location. This was like the drive through and it had a single teller line in it. And there was another location down the street. I personally didn't go on the other one. But when you guys had your water damage, I believe there's a bunch of, uh, I believe they were leasing that. I don't believe that they're reopening that location. This will be their main location. Because I asked if we could close this during construction. And I was told this was going to be the only location there in Vermont that would be active. That was the reason for my question. Thank you, yep. Bill. You're welcome. Is there a, a picture where you can show where the painting is going to take place? Yeah. Uh, can I share my screen? Oh, never mind. Oh. <laughs> I would be you to it. Go. Um, so oh. everything, all, all, like all the brick will be gray, Eric, from what I understand here. Uh, current picture the way it is now. Uh, is there one in here? I think so. Yes. yes. Yep, There's, here we go. Let me zoom in. Yep. Give me one second. So there's a contrast. What is the reason behind wanting to paint the brick? That I couldn't tell you other than the freshen it up. Um, they're going to paint the brick. They're also going with that green band. See where it's like a beige or a wood color now? They just got like the TD sign with a the green. They're going to use a metal pollock panel. And that's what that green band is. It's going to go around that they're proposing with the signs on top of it. Yeah, but my concern is about painting the brick specifically. I understand um, about the band. Yeah, other than just, I believe, just painting it uh, gray, because I think some of the other banks and their other areas, they've done the same color scheme, um, is believe why I think they're going with it. But other than that, there's nothing wrong with the brick on the outside, if that's what you're asking, where it's discolored or anything. You mean other TD banks in other areas? Is that what you mean? In other states and other yeah towns have uh, done similar uh, as far as painting and the uh, new signage and the uh, band around the branch, correct? I'm certainly not sold that that's a good idea to paint a brick building in a downtown where the majority of buildings are brick. And it fits in well that way. I think this building was probably built in the mid eighties. And I agree with you, Eric. Um, that is my concern with this application. And, th and that's why we're in front of you so that we can find out your thoughts and everything. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm just gonna, this is William, I'm just stepping in to disagree because the brick actually doesn't, it, it's really inconsistent with a lot of the other brick in town um it's not it's not representative of the of like any of the historic um bricks you know it's, um and i so i you know you know it's something that could be sandblasted off at a future time i and, i feel it look i feel it looks a lot better with the color of the bank i mean it's a you know the the color is a bright green um it it looks better with the gray in my opinion um the color of the brick is, you know, is fine. Buildings downtown are different colors. Uh, you can't, you cannot remove the paint by sandblasting because you'll damage the bricks. Our regulations don't actually allow sandblasting. Like that's one of the few things that the design regulations say you cannot sandblast. <laughs> Sorry. We did, however, allow the 
the rabble rouser to paint their walls black. Yes. So that painted over those bricks. Yeah. And that was actually much older brick. What um, was the name of that you said? It's a it's a building further down the street. Um yeah. uh so I'm just gonna I'm gonna do a little something here. Hold on. Across I'm gonna zoom station. Hmm? Across from the fire station. Yeah. Um I'm gonna do a, just a little Google Street View. So that's the right. brick on the the TD Bank building. This is the adjacent brick. Oops, sorry. Yeah, and then Did if you, you if you go across the street, it's a white it's a white church. The church is all white. Yep. Sorry. So it wouldn't look it wouldn't look out of place. By any means, mm -hmm. um, and yeah. as you say, it's not as old a brick, so it's not historic. So, see, so they got the church across the street over there. Yeah. So yeah, this well, the other one on the other side. Yep. There's this. Yeah, you, know, you got the stone, and then and then you got right over there is a big white church. Yeah. So it wouldn't look out of place. And in the back, if you look at behind the building, it's just more like a cedar, um, like a cinder block wall you know, that only has brick around the windows. So it, I, we don't feel it would look out of place in the area that it's at. I mean, the, the church that's across the street is, is it's a wood finish. So it's, it's hard. I, I don't think that's a valid comparison. Yeah. But as Ben said, there, there is precedent in the, you know, in the downtown to have, to have a painted brick. Yeah, I think that the if I remember correctly, for um, the other building that the design review committee approved to be painted um, brick, there was mm, there may have been, but it was also making sure that the type of paint they were using was going to be okay for that brick, and it wasn't going to cause the degradation of the brick with by the holding in the moisture. I think. Um, yeah. and that was also an older, like the, how the wall was made. I don't know if this is just sort of a brick facade or if it's brick all the way through. I have some recollection of previous red paint there. Mm. Yeah. I mean, you we mean. can probably find the building plans and know that. I think on Rabble Rouser, the, uh, there may have been some of that that was painted already and there may have been a condition issue. Uh, with the uh, with the brick itself, mm. I'm not sure about my brief, several right. things, yeah. including graffiti that kept getting yeah. put up. So yeah, that one was easier to hide the graffiti mm. by. And it was now. Yeah. Yeah. And you understand, we you know we don't live in your town, your city, and we're just here trying to represent TD Bank and what they would like to see. So we're more than open to hear any, you know, comments and, and suggestions. Um, you know, it's just, a, it's a tough, tough color to bring to life. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions, comments, or suggestions about the remainder of the, the painting, the sign band, the lighting in the, the letters with illuminated um, behind well, that was a question I'm also curious are we there's signs being proposed that are not in the sign band and on the side of the building yep that's all that's all up for design review the new uh uh bike rack is up for design yep. review the screening on the back around the um condenser is up for design review and filling in the window like all of those external changes there's a huge mass of them and is this part of the pack is this actually what's being proposed um so and i'm pointing to an internally lit or backlit sign and they're backlit so the ones uh hold on one second yep. i will yep i'm just going to do a different share screen on a different page and i'm trying to keep from making people nauseous by scrolling while showing it so yep, the backlit signs will be here. So the ones not in the sign band are proposed to right. be backlit. Um, correct. And I think I'm trying to remember 
uh, it says on the application. Um, uh, uh, Carolyn or Bill, are either of the, are any of the little TDs up top in the sign band going to be backlit as well, or just the ones on the brick? Uh, I believe just the ones on the brick. I can check for that. Um, it says halo lit shield. The ones on the band are going to be halo lit also. Yeah, yeah, I see I, that now. Yeah, I yes. think I I think it did say all of them were going to be, which right. Um, and you know they they will shut off. Uh, you know if, if there's an ATM inside, then obviously you want to keep something on for safety. But otherwise, you know if needed, certain signs can be shut off. Um, it's obviously the drive through is twenty four hour, but. Um, you know, I don't, I'm not quite sure the interior of the building, if there's an ATM right inside that thing, there or they just, have a, there isn't. No, the ATM is in the drive through the outside lane. Okay. Right. So then, you know, some, if you need some of the signs to be shut off, um, obviously you want it for safety reasons. Um, so they obviously know where they're going and pulling in, but, um, they could be shut off for certain hours of the night. So there's actually, there's five lit signs. All three right. in the sign band because there's one around the backside too, and then the two on the brick. For the for the signs that are on the sign band, there's the rendering showed the the signs extending over and outside the sign band, and the um, the elevations, the two D drawings show them within the sign band. Can you clarify what's the intent? Yeah, they would they would be within the sign band. I I would like an explanation about why you need the additional signs when you have a sign van. Well, one says TD Bank, the other say TD. Um, it's just part of their new image where they're doing a little bit of both type of sign. Um, you know, and if they're allowed in the sign bylaws, then they would like it. I, I appreciate the idea they put bank. It was a suggestion when they did the signs last time that they they didn't put the bank on there. But I think that's a good idea, but I don't see why that can't go up in the sign band and kind of reduce the clutter. I, I think it's just the size of the sign. So, I mean, you know, we that's what we're here to talk about, options. Um, I, I think they, they, they would most likely... Not have it on the sign band and have it on the building, in my opinion. I would like to see that personally. I was also um, thinking that it's a lot of logo signs, you know, for a small building. And I think if it does change color, it'll, it'll all together, the whole structure will stand out more. Um, right. Yeah. So I mean, I, I, I they would prefer the TD Bank on the walls and um, the green, you know, sign band. Yeah, if I could pick, you know, I agree. I think if I could pick anything, I'd like the signs on the walls and then just a nice solid green band. But I know that's a little, I don't know if that conforms with everything else that's been going on, but I think that would be nice. Does anybody have any opinions on the, having the signs on the building and just a solid band? I mean, I guess it's a question of precedent and whether we have signs on other buildings and we have, how much we allow for that. I think you're allowed two square foot. Yeah, I mean, the the square footage of signage meets, I think it's just, it's more of a design thing. So one of the standards um, that's on the recommendation form is, I mean, it's a little, it gives leeway. It says where appropriate, um, signage shall respect the original sign placement and sign bands on historic structures. So I think when this was built, they put in a sign band to help it fit in with the neighborhood, but it itself is not a historic structure. Right. So the committee has leeway on there for this one, um, how, how it wants to go. If it was a historic building, could be much more of a of a, yep. st a push to say and precedent to say it really has to be in the sign band. I, I, 
but I mean, if we could get the one in the back, because that tells people coming down the street, so you know where you're going, that you're actually going to the ATM at that point. That makes yeah. sense, because you don't want it on the building beside the rear entry, which is only for staff. Right. <laughs> there's no, there's no rear, there's no rear entry. There's only one way in and one way out. Yeah. There's a. Mm, I think there's one. There's a doorway back. back there. They're showing it being removed. Uh, the they're removing the a window here. I think there's a door here. There's they're removing the this wind. This is a window. I think there's they're removing the back door too. It's only going to be one means of egress. The main front door is the main street. There, he's correct. It's oh, there. It's door. did did you I'll double check with me. Michelle? I don't know. Is Michelle Savory caught onto that or building inspector? I don't know. Is you can have just one means of egress. And I asked that question, but then when I was told it's because of the square footage and the amount of occupants in it, that that, because I Mich said the same thing about Michelle the, told you that? Not Michelle. I did not hear that from Michelle. No. Okay. So, so Montpelier, Montpelier's building code that it uses is not always no. the same as other people. Um, I would maybe, I'll call that out with Michelle. I'll send her an email actually right now so that she and I can talk about it in the morning. I'm, okay. I don't know. No, that... <laughs> are, are you are you aware that a number of years ago somebody came in the front door, and with a weapon and robbed the bank? Uh, I if I was working in there, I'd like another way out. Yeah, that that's it. We were talking about that the other day. That's why I said it should be not taken out for that reason. That that, that, can, that can be easy. That can be easily um, looked at and and put back if that's the case. Um, What's the reason for wanting to fill in the door? I believe, uh, Eric, it's because if you look at the drawings, they're going to make that a bathroom. They were trying to avoid having a, a door, an exit door inside the the one and only bathroom, I believe. Bill but is I doing do... the Bill is doing the, in, the interior and any modifications to the building itself, and I deal with the signs. So... He would know more about that, yeah. The application only. You don't have any authority over but it looked on. like they were only taking out this glass here beside the teller window. Yeah, that's what I that's what I'm about to. Can I share my screen a second? I, I got some pictures for us. Yeah, we can uh, give at. me one second and I'll adjust. I'll, I'll set that permission. Give me one minute. Okay. I want to send this email to our building inspector so I don't forget. Um, da, da, da. sorry, was that Bill that wanted to share? Yes, please. Yes. Okay. Give it a try now, Bill. Bear with me one second. This opens up. Can everyone see my screen all right? Yes. Okay. Let me get around over there, that side. All right. So the side of the uh of the drive through currently is now. This night drop to the right gets relocated to the other side of the building. This gets infilled. Half this drive through window, the side to the right, folks, gets taken out and gets infilled. So it's just this one window here, and it won't protrude out as far. It's going to be more, they don't make this type no more. So right now it would be more flat, not like leaning out. And this is the window uh, you guys were talking about that gets infilled right here to the left that goes away. So the only thing on this side you'll see is the drive through window. Those are the, the infills on this side. Um, the doorway you guys are talking about, I put some stuff up here, so just bear with me. Those are the fence enclosures that are at a different TD bank. I gotta find the other. So this over here, this door that's back here, there's a man door, and that's the one that they're talking about in filling is back here. Um, that would be filled in brick to match. If they, if you guys decided or they decided to go with it. Um, being in and usually, um, as far as egress, it's so many feet for you to get to that door. Mm -hmm. And this building doesn't look very big. 
It's um, not. I have my, yeah, I had my construction supervisor's license in Massachusetts, and it's so many feet to get to that, you know, that's whether one, how many doors you need to have. Yeah, so we can check the building code for Montpelier and... Yeah, well, like I said, I've I've emailed our building inspector. We have one building inspector for the city yeah. of Montpelier. So I've emailed her. Um, and so hopefully she'll be able to see that in the morning. She's got a bunch of inspections tomorrow, but I, I yeah. emailed her so that just as a double check um, okay. for, you know, especially because it is a bank. It's got m more concerns than just making sure everybody can, you know, get to the egress in case of like a fire or something. Right. <laughs> But it's also just for the design review committee's understanding. Some of these changes are also reducing ways for water to get in the building for future flood events. Right. The uh, night drop is going to get relocated on this wall right here, right to the right, right here. There's a new night drop going in. Then since we're out here and we're talking about the other stuff that you had, guys had on your uh, review, uh, this bike rack comes out, a concrete pad goes here with um, that white fence. I don't know if you guys saw the picture. I, I tried to show you an example of what they were talking about. So something like this, a privacy fence like this. This is at another TD. It's an enclosure for the trash, so it doesn't, you don't see these trash toters outside. It kind of, they go on the outside of the branch. And for this, the screening that it's calling for, this air unit, this condenser unit, is calling for some slot fence, which is similar to this, something that's uh, more uh, vertical that conceals that so it doesn't, uh, and then it would be in a grade two probably to match the paint, I would assume, just so it blends in so it's not an eyesore having that um, unit sticking out like it is. The concrete pad that's going here, so this is where the trash toter would be with a new concrete pad. And if I know you guys had on here the bicycle, um, rack. Their new ones look like these right here, folks. Of course, we would not, <laughs> we'd have guys not do the overspray like whoever <laughs> did it at this location. I happened to be out in Massachusetts. <laughs> I, this is the first time I saw them and I was just like, who did this? I mean, <laughs> they apparently yeah, yeah. didn't uh, care, but this is, I just wanted to be able to show you what they look like because I never seen them before. So I took the opportunity to take a pic so I could share it with you folks. So thanks, Bill. Yeah, where, well. where are you proposing yeah. to put those? Those, I believe, I don't, because I'm, I'm on my laptop, so I can't open multiple screens. So that I believe the concrete pad goes over here where this uh, current old existing bike rack is. Toters go here, and I think the uh, the bike uh, rack leaves are on this side as well. I can't I can't remember if they're on the left here or on the right. Um, I could pull up the drawing here and see. And the, They're on the right side. They're on the right. Oh, right, thank you. It's, it's hard to so tell if there's if the trash is on that side. Does that mean somebody has to come out through the front of the building to come around to? Give oh yeah, that? if they if they get rid of that door, they're going to have to. It's the only way that they would have to go in and out. You're correct on that. How how big is the is the trash enclosure? Oh, it's pretty small. So this yeah, it's not very big. Yes. Yeah. yeah, it's not like a dumpster. No. And, and you mentioned the fencing around the compressor was vertical, but the picture shows that horizontal. Let me see. You're talking about in the drawing, sir? Yes. Well, yep. no, on the photograph that shows the updated design, it shows horizontal fencing around the compressor in the back of the building. And you mentioned, I thought you mentioned that it was going to be vertical. Yeah, so it's, well, it's drawing S05. Yeah, let me just pull that up. So I thought I read on there it was supposed to be slotted uh, fencing. So when I Googled slotted, that's what came up. You said that's zero five. Yep, I just pulled it up on the share screen. Oh, I mean, and it's on a two hundred one as well. Okay. Yeah, so it shows these as horizontal. Oh, so yeah. there's the louvers and that slotted. Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, not as tight as the one around the trash enclosure, but still. Uh... Yeah, like you said, louvered makes more sense as a better descriptive term. Yeah. And then that drainage pipe, folks, that's one thing that you got that picture brought up um, to the left of the drive through window on the existing picture. See it? You can barely see it. There's like a pipe. The just white one. There. Oh, yeah. here? Yeah. That gets the enclosure that you see there. So that would be uh, to the, uh, yeah, there you go. That would blend in. The, we would frame that in and uh, board it, and it would get painted as well to blend it in with the side of the, the building. Can you, I'm sorry, can you say that again? Yeah, so there's a drain pipe, the roof drain pipe. It's just sticking out no nowhere right there to the left of the drive through window. Yep. We'll be boxing and then closing that to kind of blend it in with the, uh, the exterior wall when we and do the infill of that window. And what are you bo um, boxing it in with? Well, it would be metal framing, I believe, and then we would use dense glass, and it would be painted. We could use like an AZAC too, like an AZAC board. PVC. And then you got the new bollard over at the corner to protect the corner of the bank that's going in. And I believe that's the only bollard it calls for on the uh, site. And the canopy also all gets done underneath with it gets worked out and every all the new uh all the condo that's exposed there all gets put up underneath. So all it's, all it's there is going to be the lighting underneath the canopy. <clears throat> Any further questions? So the, any closure of the rear door would be subject to the building inspector. Yeah. Yep. That's a that's a that's a code enforcement question as to whether or not that happens. I was just googling, and it it brought up more about windows being egress instead of doors. So I can't tell you right off the top of my head. Um. So I'm just gonna gonna state my opinion. On this, I think that um, you know the 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 building is is pretty flat and and banal. It's just it has very little relief to it. So I think um, you know the on the flat surfaces, I think that the the signage on the walls actually provides some some detail uh, that a little bit of you know some something that's not as flat and and impersonable as you as you're walking by. I think the continuous band on top. Is an improvement over the the limited green band. Uh, the the paint there is actually, you know, the wood and the paint are, are are aged and just a clean a clean surround. I think would be better. I think the windows generally are um, are an improvement with what you know, the facade is cleaner as you're come as you're coming in. Um, and I think that the you know clean the other parts of cleaning up are 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 pretty nice as well. Um, and I just just it's not our jurisdiction at all. But you know, typically in terms of code items, it's the the who, whoever is the authority having jurisdiction has the final say rather than than a code book. Um, so I, you know, I I think there's some inconsistencies between you know some of the some of the illustrations, um, but I have no objections to the to the horizontal um, details for the for the fencing. You skipped over your opinion about the white brick. <laughs> the or, gray, the gray, the painting. Gray brick. I like it. I think it's fine. I think. Um, I. I don't mind the paint color either. It brightens the brightens that corner. And again, where we've allowed brick to be painted 
even on an historic building, is sort of hard to say to deny it on a building that's as new as this one. And again, that's just my take on it. If I may, I think I finally got my audio to start working. My name is Scott Hope. I represent Atlas Signs. We are contracted by TD Bank to manufacture the signs that are in question, in addition to the ACM paneling that will be wrapping the building. Uh, in working with A&D over at TD when developing the scope, it was selected to paint the building repros gray as to be a better contrast to the green banding. The green banding is the Hi, hello, this is TD Bank, we're here. The green is very unique to TD and recognizable by most of their customers. The TD logos themselves, yes, the one on the back is better for those trying to find the drive-through. A little bit repetitive on the corner. I agree with some of those. However, it's there as TD Bank, which someone had mentioned that they like because it's representing as a bank. TD is branching out into a number of different industries. And so they want to make sure their customers know that this is a place where they can do business financially. Um, and that's what I needed. I wanted to uh, express about the gray that's going to be painted. Um, and Carolyn is here on my behalf, but I'm glad I finally got my microphone working so I could represent that. Thank you, Scott. And just one, one final note from, from me, the, I also have concerns about the, the drain pipe coming down, just boxing it in. I, I think that might look very out of place just to add some, you know, a, a new material that, that doesn't look, um, you know, doesn't have any consistency with the rest of the building, small though it is. I agree with you on the drain pipe. Uh, I think painting the building is a real mistake. Uh, painting brick is, is not really reversible. And it's going to be a very, it's going to be out of place in the downtown because there's so many brick buildings downtown. Um, I, I agree with Eric. I would have to vote no on, on painting any brick. Um, I'd be okay with the new signage on the sides of the building. If we don't have the signage on the sign band, I think that that looks just, that's too much. Um, but my main concern, though, is painting the brick. I think that's a bad idea. I think it sets a bad precedent. And it does not fit in with the rest of our downtown. I think in closing the drain pipe just makes it stand out more. Uh, it's going to have to be, uh, you know, enclosure is obviously going to have to be larger than the pipe. Uh, and the pipe is a bit out from the wall, so it's going to stick out. Uh, and... Uh, uh, I don't. I don't see that as anything necessary. Uh, and you've and also I, got three. You know, you've already got two other, like round cylinders on the. You've got the the col the round column on the corner, the flagpole, and so it's it's actually more consistent with the rest of the building to have it be exposed. So Ben, what's your take on the? Uh the brick versus the painting of the brick? I mean, I guess it's a, a totality of like the amount of like logos, the backlit of the, the perimeter lighting of the signs and the painting of the brick feels like a real like big commercial statement for our town in a way that we're not used to. I do actually see, I like the white brick and I do like the TD bank uh signs i could if they weren't if they didn't have the lighting around the back side of them and there wasn't like the td on the sign band i do think the full green sign band is a way cleaner look it looks as though they're intending to paint the undersides of the soffits as well as the the, the trim around the doors of, along with the fascia on the gable walls and like that all feels like a very like much more thoughtful package of a building and so i guess I feel comfortable with while it, while there because there is wiggle room about it being a modern building um, that we're not you know like setting a precedent for all the other buildings in town brick buildings in town to get painted that is a concern that I do have but I feel like this is a unique building that allows for that um, 
I'm more okay with it. So again, in the the TD Bank signs on the side of the building, and then having just a solid band around the building with the exception of the band in the back with the TD up top in the rear. So that one's okay, right? The little TD on the back side for people coming down School Street from Elm. It, it does. I would agree that I just want to comment that I'm looking around your town, and you know, in uh, there there are brick buildings right next door to us, but then the rest of them are painted, and some of them actually kind of gray and with the you know the color of brick, the wooden buildings going further down the road. Those are clapboard buildings, and the. They have been painted different colors depending on when they were built and when they were renovated over right. the past 150 years. So okay. the, the collaborate buildings have been obviously painted over over their history. <laughs> right. I, I just don't feel like it would be out of place to be gray. I don't. Well, so Carolyn, this is Meredith. So I'm the zoning administrator, so I issue permits that don't come to the design review either yeah. in general it's not the color specifically to this corner building it's the fact that it's a brick building that's now being proposed to be painted versus right. like a gray stone building that had been was proposed to be built as gray stone or something like like if it was a new building okay. that was being proposed to be gray i don't think anybody here would have a problem with it it's right. that it's a currently brick, red brick building that's now being proposed to be painted over when we have lots and lots of red brick buildings. I think that's the point, not the specific color being picked. Okay. Risk, You're absolutely right, Meredith. All right, thank you. The risk of the painting of brick too is, is that if it's not maintained, it'll, it'll deteriorate, whereas you do have a maintenance-free facade, well, relatively maintenance-free facade right now that you don't have ever have to, you know, hardly ever have to worry about. So we have a, a three to two, it looks like at this point, three in favor of painting the brick or allowing the brick to be painted and to against so we're we're having splits on signage and and the painting what's the split on the signage I, or is it a consensus that it would the two wall signs and again they're backlit they're proposed to be backlit which is consistent with some of the other buildings in town a soft backlit is not really obtrusive unless unless anybody has an issue with a backlit. Again, with the right illumination, with the right you know, lumens, it's it's pretty can be pretty soft. Yeah, and just so it's a each of the backlit, it works out to be like eight hundred or nine hundred lumens per sign. And again, oh, and that number of lumens would depend on whether you, you're backlitting a sign on brick or backlitting a sign yeah. on the painted building, because the painted obviously is going to be more reflective. But that's not many lumens for backlit sign. It's not a whole lot, I don't think. I, well, I think that was the, once you factored in that it was backlit, like what's projecting out yep. was going to be around 900 lumens. So, I mean, my understanding from what everybody was saying was that allow the two wall signs on the main frontages and then one sign band TD on the back on the for back. people coming the yeah. back way. That in general, it sounded like people didn't didn't like the fact that there were four signs on two, two sides of the building. That's correct. <laughs> okay. Okay, and I, actually we can identify the differentiation of that because we have two 
sets of criteria, one for all projects and one for the science anyway. Yep. So um, it's just more thought about the painting of brick, sorry, was if there is going to be all this infill and they are going to reduce the size of the uh, drive through window, what gets filled in in that place seems always difficult to match an existing brick with whatever new brick they might be using and how to, if we were going to put a line about not painting them, what goes in that place. Mm -hmm. So is the proposal to end fill with brick and then paint it? That is correct. Yeah, that's what Builder said. That's correct. Okay. To, to respond to Ben's concern, I understand the concern, but we've had very good results for people matching brick. And I'm thinking specifically of the city center building. Because they saved yeah, there they were able to save one of those, some of the ones they took out. And they did an excellent job. Yeah, I don't think they're taking anything out here. That's all. I, I think with a contemporary building, like... It might be easier. It's, I think it is easier, like like matching the fire station. You know, any of the sand struck brick is going to be really hard compared to, you know, an extruded brick mm -hmm. that, that's done now. Good point. I think filling in, is, it's fine to do it with another kind of material recessed, or if you recess the infill a little bit, the match isn't so important. Okay, the proposal again is to infill with brick and then it would all be painted, which would obviously solve any matching issues. Again, the painted building does require more maintenance, but that's up to the bank to take care of that. So it sounds like we have three that are okay with painting the brick versus two opposed. So we'll go through the criteria based on that assumption. And then I'll just make a notation here that the removal, and again, these are the recommendations, the removal of the rear door as a second means of egress. is a decision left up to the building inspector and current regulations. Okay, I'll go through the criteria. There's a set of criteria for the building project as well as the signs, a separate one for the signs. Exterior design and materials of new construction or alterations of existing buildings shall be consistent and compatible with the characteristics of the existing building or other projects and the properties in the district. Additions and alterations to non-historic and non-contributing structures excuse me, shall respect and be compatible with existing patterns and setbacks found in adjacent buildings. New additions on non-historic and non-contributing structures that overshadow or diminish the historic character of adjacent contributing structures are prohibited. And again, this is going to be acceptable based on a three to two uh, split decision. Existing buildings shall be recognized as a physical record of their time, place, and use. Acceptable. Location and appearance of all utilities, mechanical equipment, trash storage, and fencing shall be cited to minimize adverse visual impact or adequately and appropriately screen from public view. Acceptable. 
Rhythm, visual patterns established by the alterations of solid walls and openings, windows and doors, and the facade of a building shall create a rhythm. We're not really adding any. We're taking away some, but again, acceptable. Architectural features, including but not limited to cornices, windows, shutters, fan lights, entablature, trim, and other forms of molding or character defining detailing prevailing on the existing building shall be considered in the alteration of a building acceptable. Can we, can we call out the, or like make a note about the, the downspout here? Is that the place for it? It's just another little note for, I mean, I know we don't have anybody from TD on, but personally, like, I would think that the downspout would be a lot easier to get to in case there's a leak if it's not covered up with another layer of material, too, <laughs> just as a practical matter. Steve, what was it, the, uh, uh, the first two criteria, what was your comment on those? Did you read it again, please? The first two criteria, one, for additions, alterations to non-historic structures. And number two, existing buildings shall be recognized as a physical record of their time, place, and use. I, I think the painting violates both of those. Well, again, it's going to be based on a vote, which sounds like a three to two, unless that's reversed, in which case it would be unacceptable. But again, it's not unanimous, but based on five votes, we have a three to two. Yeah, so I think yeah, so Eric, so that's that's one of the that's one of the points where the painting comes into play is that first criteria and the second. Um, but it's a I know Rebecca's here, but she's an alternate, so there's only five votes allowed. Um and so yeah, it's a three to two, at least at this point, based on what people are saying. But yeah, he's I <clears throat> Does it make sense to mark those two criteria as the ones that are three to two? I mean, ultimately, the whole thing is the vote is on the entire project. I understand. Um, but I think it, it can definitely, at the very least, be very clear in the minutes, too. But those are where those are an issue. I just made a note on each of those that it was acceptable by a three to two vote in favor. That's it. Yeah. Number 14, signage removal. When removing a sign, evidence of the sign's installation shall be removed to the greatest extent or obviously painted over, covered over. Acceptable. Outdoor lighting fixtures, the structural design of outdoor lighting fixtures shall be compatible with the architectural design and function of the building and, comp and compatible with the neighborhood, acceptable. Landscaping, screening, and site furnishings, projects within the design review overlay district and subject to the landscaping requirements shall consider the following. Site furnishings, including fencing, seating, and other types of site furniture visible from the street or side yards. And does the landscaping obscure or undermine key architectural patterns or elements on the historic building, mechanical equipment screening, including the compressor in the rear? Again, acceptable. So based on this, on the designation of the first two, including painting of the building, uh, all in favor, speak your names. Ben. William. And Stephen. So it's still three to two. Three to two in favor. And I'll just make a note, two were opposed. And for the purposes of the minutes, I just want to state my reasons. I find that the painting of the brick is not consistent with what else is around that area. Um, and it 
is something that in my view is not reversible. Uh, and those are the reasons, both because I don't think it blends in with the area and I don't think that it respects the, the, um, the tradition of this particular building. Well, I agree with that. It also uh, alters one of the original design elements of the buildings. And we don't just review historic buildings. We review all buildings. Uh, I think this is a real mistake to allow that to be painted. We thank you for your time tonight. Wait, we're not done yet. We have to. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> you got to go through the, still have to go through the, all the stuff for the signs. They have two oh, different right. forms to fill out. <laughs> and again, I'm making a note for the signs, the two TD signs in the sign ban in front of the building. Will not be installed. The two ED bank signs on the, on the walls in front of the building and the TD sign and the sign ban at the rear of the building are recommended. Can I place a request on the sign on the rear elevation? If the two on the corner sh matching shields are not going to be allowed, can we add bank? to the end of the one that is allowed on the back of the sign band? I think it's a good idea to label it as a bank. I do too. Sounds sounds reasonable to me. The only the only difference is because it will have the green panel as a backer, yep. the bank will be in white letters. So it would be easily read. So I changed that to read and a TD bank sign in the sign band at the rear of the building are recommended. So I'll just need the new uh, total sign area for the Absolutely. revision, just to make sure that we're still within the um, allowance, which I think we will be. I'll make sure and that again, happens. And again, Thanks. that the TD bank sign in the rear of the building in the sign band will be within the, within the sign band rather than Extend, right. It will not extend beyond. over the roof line or underneath the awning. In the criteria for the signs, the size, location, design, color, texture, lighting, and material of all exterior signs within the design review district shall be compatible with the building and structures of the site and surrounding properties. Acceptable. Where appropriate, signing shall respect the original sign placement and sign bands on historic structures acceptable at this location and those in the, in the sign locations. It is recommended the sign placement be centered over building entries. In this location, you're locating the signs on either side of the entry. Sign installation shall minimize damage to character-defining materials on the building acceptable. One of the recommendations is that any sign mounting be in the mortar joints of the brick, which is common installation practice. In masonry buildings, fasteners shall be in mortar joints. Sign design, color, and typography shall respect historic precedents where appropriate. 
and shall be the appropriate scale for existing and new buildings acceptable. <clears throat> Signed support structures shall be compatible with the building architecture and must not be overly complex or dominant in and of themselves acceptable. Lighting fixtures for signs on facades of historic buildings shall not conflict mm -hmm. with or damage the building's architectural integrity or cover or impact character defining architectural features acceptable. Lighting fixtures for signs mounted on all building facades shall be designed with appropriate housing, shielding, and photometrics to ensure that there is appropriate lighting levels and illuminate an illumination that focuses on the sign panels exclusively acceptable. All in favor of the signs, speak your names. Eric says yes. William. Uh, Martha, I say yes. And Steve says yes. So that's five to zero in favor. You want to describe the next step? So, because um, both the because there's recommendations on how to make the process go forward, as well as amendments to the um, signs based on the design review committee, I've got filled out forms that I will be emailing around. Um, and Bill, you'll need to sign them as the applicant. Um, that you're in agreement with those recommendations. Um, so that's just part of the zoning process here because everything that the committee has commented on and make it made recommendations for are things within their jurisdiction. I just take those and put them in as conditions of the zoning permit going forward unless you or TD object. Um, so I will get these scanned and emailed to you. Um, and if everything is fine with these tweaks, you'll want to sign it um, then there's a block for that and get them back to me and that, uh, emailing them back to me is fine. Okay. Um, so yeah, that's the design review process. I think there were still a couple of things that we needed to iron out before I can actually move forward with the permits. Um, we'll go back to those emails maybe tomorrow and I'll try and get that input from Michelle on that door as well. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good Thank night. you. Thank you. And we can move on. Has everyone had a chance to review the minutes from August the 19th? Yes, I've, I've read them and I move that we accept them the way they're written. Second. All in favor of the minutes, speak your names. Ben. William. Stephen. Martha. Eric. Does anyone have any other business at this point? Do I hear a motion to adjourn? So move. <laughs> Do I hear a second? I'll second. All in favor of adjournment, speak your names. Martha. Ben. William. Stephen. Eric. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you all for coming. Thank you, everybody.